Hey, it's grilling season. It is. And a lot of you be looking for that chicken, you know, grilled chicken breasts, grilled chicken legs, maybe grill you some wings. But folks, I'm here to tell you, we fixing to grill up some thighs. Yes, we are. Overlook sometime a good light and dark meat combination with a great jalapeno honey glaze that goes on top. Come on, the smokers go in and I ain't waiting. Hey, now, you know, we're talking about that chicken, and I'm talking about we need to be able to get the biggest bang for our buck. Yeah, so a lot of times them chicken thighs that you're seeing there, bone in, of course, with the skin on. That's what you want because we're going to keep all that moisture when we cook them, but they're cheaper. But also, there's more meat on one of them than there is a chicken wing and really a chicken leg. Now today, we're gonna to do it on the pit barrel smoker. But you can do this on the grill as well, just use you some indirect heat. But folks, a trick to this, and some of you are already shaking your head before I even said trick, you are, is we're gonna boil this chicken first. Yeah, you heard me. And a lot of you think I'm saying boil. No, it's boil the chicken first, like boil, like boiled coffee, yeah. Folks, we're gonna speed up our cooking time, but this way we can boil that chicken, keep that skin on there really well, and then we can turn it over, take a little knife, cut that bone, and he'll just pull right out of there. But then we're gonna stuff it. Ooh, and I have made up a great concoction. Me and Beagle worked on it for three or four days, we did. It is some cream cheese, some onion powder, dry mustard, and a little bit of brown sugar. <clears throat> Folks, this stuff is gonna be good wrapped up in bacon. It's a happy meal. That's the end of the video. Let's eat, I'm through right here. It is good to go. <laughs> Folks, before we go any further, let's talk about the giveaway we just had this last week. Three lucky winners they are. We paired up with the Ariot people who are giving some gift certificates away, $100 each. And hey, speaking of Ariot, they keep me looking fine. I mean boots and shirt, Whew, I'll be looking really good. But who were them winners? A lot of you be asking. Tyler McDonald, and we got a great email from Tyler. He is truly a great person, as they all are. Eric Anthes, and this guy, he didn't give me his name. Just on his little tab, first last. He was the first one to enter, and he ain't the last one to win. He's in the middle this time. So thank the good folks at Ariat. We appreciate it. And Shannon will have you a link down there below to where you can find out the same clothes that I'm wearing. And you can look suave and debonair. You seen me, you did. I took these chicken thighs and placed them in a medium-sized sauce pot there, blazed the water level up to where it just covered them all there and boiled them about 15 minutes, I did. Look at that good skin that stays on that chicken. We be needing it like that. And that little bone is right there. So I want you to take your knife and just cut right across the top of that on both sides so we can get that bone to just peel right out of there. You may have to do you a little surgical work Take your finger and just reach in there and then just go to pulling him backwards. It's sort of like shelling a crawdad. Now folks, what's left on here, you throw on the grill for the grill inspectors. Do not think this is going to waste because it's not. So when you got it just like that and a lot of you say, well that chicken ain't done. I didn't aim for it to be done. We're going to finish cooking it right over here on this pit barrel. But we got to get all them bones out of there so we can stuff it this flap of skin that is good, toothpick him, wrap him with bacon, and we'll be good to go. Well, we have got them all deboned, we have, and we made us up a magic filling to go in there, which is cream cheese, a little onion powder, dry mustard, and some brown sugar. Whew. Folks, this stuff right here, you can just put on a cracker and eat, it is good. And see right there where that bone was? That's a perfect place for this to go. Now, I don't know how y'all's chicken come if they're four in a sack. We had five in this one today. So just make sure you get some of it in everybody. Now, you be thinking to yourself already. I hear you out there. I got that ESPHG, which means I can hear as good as Duke. When you roll that back up and pin it and you put it on the fire, all that's going to ooze out, ain't it? Wrong. Because what have we got? We have a bacon stopper. That's what it's used for. So you just go around the end that is left open, pull that up as tight as you can, and guess what? It's time to toothpick it. There is one loaded up. All he gets is a little bit of that mesquite seasoning all the way around. 
Well, when you wrap some of these folks and you get them wrapped around there, and we're going over the end trying to close that up to where none of that sneaks out away from you, some of these try to spread back out. So you may have to take an extra toothpick and go plumb through that chicken thigh and then come back through and get the bacon pinned the other way and you're good to go. But just keep an eye on it. Make sure that you ain't gonna lose none of that goodness in there. You may have to pin him on two sides. Well, like I told you, today we are using that pit barrel smoker. Now you can do these on a little smoker or you can do these on a grill. But if you're doing this on a grill, I want you to do it more of an indirect style. Get that heat away from you because sure, we're not cooking long because we're nearly done already, but I wanna let it sit in there long enough that it gets good infusion of smoke and get some of that good color on there. So I'm gonna use hardwood oak today, but also I'm gonna go back with that and I'm gonna add me some cherry wood cause I do love me some fruit wood with some chicken. And you can see really one of the deals that I really like about these pit barrels too. You ain't gotta take that grill plum off there. It's just got that little fold and latch that you can go ahead, pull back, throw you some good fruit wood in there or whatever you wanna smoke with and you're good to go. But guess what? It's time to put the yard bird on the grill, it is. And there is an aroma of smoke. You folks that's living southeast of me, stick your head out the window right now and go, You'll get it, it's coming y'all's way. Well, time to get them chickens on there. Now you'll notice on the pit barrel, I got the little vent at the bottom plum closed up and Shan will have you a link down there below to where y'all can find out some good stuff about this pit barrel. But let's get these yard burdens on there. Guess what folks? Them chickens have went to roost. So let's shut the barn door before they get out and we're gonna let them cook. Probably gonna go about 10 minutes on that side. We'll turn them over, go another 10, and then we're just gonna go back and forth and we'll get us some basting mixed up in here. And you don't wanna miss that part, folks. We are breaking out some of my favorite stuff. What is it? Stick around, I'll tell you. Now, if you got one of them temperature gauges that's on your little smoker somewhere, you know, we're running ideal smoking temperature here starting out maybe 220 to 250 along in there somewhere. And as we go along, we'll probably give it a little more air to where we can finish up and get that nice caramelization on that skin. Well, 10 minutes has arrived, it has. Whew. I want y'all to look at some of that good color that's going on there. Mm. All we're gonna do now, folks, is just turn them over. And this is where the buddy system comes into play. Sometimes they wanna be rolling around, so you just lean them up there against their buddy and hope that they stay. We'll let them go about another 10 minutes on that side, but while we got a little time, remember I told you we was gonna make up something special to glaze them with? Look here, folks. Crown Royal Peach. I'm gonna try to incorporate some fruit every chance I get. So, first of all, we got as a jalapeno. Now, do you like more heat or do you need less heat? Me, y'all know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna have it all. So I'm not gonna stem it, nothing, take them seeds, leave them in there. I just wanna cut it up where it'll get in this slap chopper here. So see, can you get them all in there? I think you're supposed to actually do it this way to where they all fit in there. Put the contraption back together. And... You have to get in the rhythm, folks, to get to cooking, to get it from your heart to go in there. So off they go. Sorry about that, B. It's okay, buddy. Into our apparatus. Peach crown. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't have peach crown, what do you do? Oh, folks, if you don't have it, and it is sort of hard to find, any bourbon that you have, but I want you to bring that peach flavor out there with it. So get you some peach preserves and mix with it or some peach jam, about two good heaping tablespoons of it in there with the bourbon. It'll give you that same flavor. So we're going to add about that much, which is the perfect amount. Then some honey, because we want it to give it a little caramelizing effect. And since I ain't got a fork or a spoon, I'm going to stir it with a knife. But you can see that consistency there. That's sort of what we're after. I don't want it to be so thick that it won't run nowhere. I want it to sort of just lay on there all pretty like and caramelize. 
You could drink that stuff for breakfast right there, Shan. It'll help you. So we're gonna let it cook on there for that other 10 minutes, which is probably down to seven now. Then we're gonna glaze it. Let it go about three minutes, turn it over, glaze it some more, another three. Check that temp. What is the magical temp of chicken? Duke knows right there he does. 165, Duke says. So bear with me, folks. We nearly there. Well, we've been on another 10 we have. Let me let some of that goodness out of there so I can see what I'm actually doing. So we're gonna start glazing with some of this magic jalapeno honey peach crown. Mm. And there's a lot of smoke. And if some of them jalapenos was to just stay right up there on top, mm, they just so pretty they are. And we ain't gonna use all this, but we gonna finish off with it, put some on right there on the top. Give it some color and some pizzazz. So we're gonna let them go about three minutes, turn them over, baste them again, and then we'll be getting oh so close. Folks, what we have here is two remnants of some bacon. And my taste testers have been out here the whole time. Duke might have been in the pool. Hang on there. Come around here, big. You just want in the shade. Thank you, my little friend, for helping out today. You've done a good job. Thank you so much. Folks, you see me cut that in half, and mm, the goodness is in there. You want to make sure that you've got all the toothpick apparatuses gone out of there before you take a bite. Mmm. The good smoke you got on that chicken, but it's so tender from boiling it that way with keeping the skin intact. But also, that cream cheese and garlic that was in there blended together with a little brown sugar. And then you get that hint of just a little heat from that jalapeno and that peach whiskey just ties it all in together where it's smoother than Frank Sinatra when, oh, <laughs> smoother than Frank Sinatra when he was trying to sing a song it was. Oh. I mean, this stuff is good. This stuff is so, folks, it's so good. Your rooster, will fly to the top of the barn and make sure everything is okay and your hens will lay two to maybe three eggs a day. This is how good it is. Make you want to do the chicken walk. Not the chicken dance, the chicken walk. Woo! Big says that is some fine dining right there for sure. But folks, so easy to do, often overlooked at times. But I mean, this stuff is tasty. This is about as good as you're going to get with an easy deal you can fix. Get out there in the backyard, throw it on a grill, a smoker, invite the family in. Let's fellowship and rejoice and have some chicken. Well, folks, I'm nearly winded from doing all that chicken running around dance there. Whoo, that stuff is good. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and veterans. And remember, folks, that all this time we got so much to be thankful for, for all the people out there that are keeping us safe and keeping us stocked. Also, I'd like to congratulate our winners again. Hey, and I want to tip my hat, I do, to the good folks at Ariat. That was so kind of them. They take care of us so well, they do. And hey, I know you might be looking for our cookbook. Getting hard to find at some bookstores, and sometimes even Amazon's a little late shipping it out. I just unloaded another 485 this morning before we did the video. So they're on the website, kentrollins.com. We'll sure personalize you one, get it out. And if you even ask for it, we'll draw a little paw print of the Beagle and the Duke and sign it too. As always, I thank Andy and Shan so much for helping me out on this because folks, I have the easy part. They have the hard part. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed as always because I sure did. The Beagle and the Duke did. God bless you each and every one. And I'll see you down the stuffed chicken thigh train.
It's hard when you're a production dog and you have to cook when it's hot. We have to furnish him a pool so he can cool down periodically. Does that help? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. We boiled this about 15 minutes. That is the one I just grabbed that the bone was out of. <laughs> I'm ready to eat.